In this video I'm going to take a look at the displacement reactions of the halogens and we use these reactions to demonstrate their relative oxidizing power. So it's just a reminder there that an oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. So in this series of reactions that I'm going to video I'm going to be taking a halogen, so this is my source of chlorine, and I'm going to react it with an aqueous halide ion. So in this jar I've got bromide ions, and in this jar I've got iodide ions. And you can see the other bottles I've got bromine. So bromine water is a source of bromine, and iodine solution is a source of iodine. And we're going to use the colours that are produced to demonstrate what's happened in the reaction. I'm also going to use this solvent here which is called cyclohexane and I'll explain the role of the cyclohexane once I get into the experiments. So the first reaction we'll look at is a reaction between chlorine and aqueous potassium bromide. So I've got the full equation here, the beginnings of the full equation here, and the ionic version here. So essentially the chlorine is in contact with bromide ions, aqueous bromide ions. So what we've got to ask ourselves is, is chlorine able to take this electron away from this bromide ion? So you'll see in the far right hand corner there I've drawn up the, the members of group 7 in order. So we've got fluorine at the top and astatine at the bottom. So here are the two halogens involved in this reaction. So can chlorine take the electron from this bromide ion? Let's have a look at the experiment. So I've put some aqueous potassium bromide in the test tube there. And in the dropper I've got some chlorine water. So I'm going to put the chlorine water into the test tube and we'll see what happens. I'm going to bring the cyclohexane into play now. So I'm going to add a, a small amount of cyclohexane. At the moment we've got aqueous conditions in this test tube. And the cyclohexane is actually a, a non-polar solvent. It's not going to mix with the aqueous layer. It's going to form a separate layer. But hopefully, you'll be able to see the purpose of the cyclohexane once we've um, given this a good shake. Okay, so you can see we've got these two layers. We've got the cyclohexane layer, so that's the non-polar layer. And we've also got the aqueous layer. And you can see we've got different colours here. So we've still got that original yellow colour. It's actually got a bit paler. I don't know if you can tell, but we've definitely got a, a definite orange colour inside this cyclohexane layer. So if you know the colours of your halogens, you'll know that that's Br2. Bromine is that colour, so the ready orange colour. So the cyclohexane layer is telling us that there's bromine inside this test tube now. Did we have bromine to start with? No, we didn't. We had bromide. So there's been a change, there's been a reaction. So we'll have a look at the equations now to explain what's gone on in that reaction. So we'll start with the dot and cross diagram. So hopefully this will kind of bring it to life for you. So we started off with the chlorine molecule. So we've got two covalently bonded chlorine atoms. And we've got, we have two bromide ions. And that orange electron is key to explaining what's going on here. So that orange electron is basically given the given us this negative charge. Remember we've got two of these because we have two KBRs in the equation. So what happened? Well the chlorine has each chlorine atom has accepted this extra electron. So the chlorine atoms that make up the Cl2 molecule have sort of separated and become individual chloride ions. So they've now got this extra electron. So if you think about well, what's happened to the bromine, well, it's lost that electron, so it becomes a bromine atom with its seven outer electrons. So two of those bromine atoms have obviously combined to form a covalently bonded Br2 molecule. 
and that was the orange colour that we saw in the cyclohexane layer. So we could say that bromine's been displaced, it's been pushed out and we've got the Br2 instead of bromide. So in terms of oxidation and reduction, we've got an oxidation process taking place whereby the, the chlorine has accepted the electron and so essentially this Br- ion has lost an electron. So the bromide ions have been oxidized and if you think about what's happened to the chlorine atoms here, they've each gained an electron and so the chlorine has been reduced. In terms of oxidation number, we've got a zero oxidation number for chlorine in Cl2, but we've obviously got a minus one oxidation number there. So that's a drop in oxidation number. So that's a reduction process. Gain of electrons, a drop in oxidation number. Oxidation number for the bromine species, we've got a negative one oxidation number in bromide, but a zero oxidation number in bromine. So the oxidation number has increased by one, so that's an oxidation process. In terms of electrons, the bromide has lost that electron, oxidation is loss of electrons. So the chlorine did the oxidizing, so it's classed as an oxidizing agent. The definition of an oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. You see the chlorine has accepted that electron, so it's the oxidizing agent. And you can see I've got the two colours here. So we had a yellow colour in water. And that's because bromine's a non-polar substance. So there's no dipole on this. So it doesn't really dissolve very well in polar water molecules. So aqueous conditions are polar. The bromine doesn't really dissolve in those conditions. But it absolutely loves cyclohexane. That's the chemical um, representation of cyclohexane. And... It absolutely loves this solvent because the solvent's nonpolar, bromine's nonpolar, and so it can form van der Waals forces with the solvent and fully dissolve into it. So you see its true colour in the cyclohexane, and that's why we use the cyclohexane. Let's finish the explanation of what's happened by considering the sort of um, electron shell diagrams, just the simple electron shell diagrams for chlorine and bromide. We've got, remember, chlorine is two Cl atoms covalently bonded, and we've got this bromide ion with this extra electron here, and it's basically a, a battle between um, who can attract this electron the strongest. So the bromide ion, the nucleus here, is holding on to these outer electrons. And again, the nucleus of the chlorine atom is attracting the electrons as well. So who's going to win? Well, chlorine does, because it has a smaller atomic radius. I'm sure you can see that from the way I've drawn the diagrams. It has less shielding, so chlorine only has two inner shells, whereas... The bromide has one, two, three inner shells, then the outer shell with the seven electrons in, or eight if you, if you think of the extra one. And so chlorine has a greater attraction for the electron. And so chlorine can pull this electron across. That would turn into a chloride ion. That would turn into a, an isolated bromine atom. You get two of those together and you form your Br2 molecule. So this has lost an electron, so it's been oxidized. This has accepted the electron, so it's an oxidizing agent.